National Fisherman Live. I'm Leslie Taylor. Here's some recent fishing news from around the coasts. There's something to celebrate for West Coast ground fishermen. Because of population rebounds due to strong fisheries management, the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch program has upgraded the status of 21 commercially important fish. Overall, Seafood Watch gives 84% of ground fish landings on the West Coast its two highest sustainability rankings, best choice or good alternative. As it was only early 2000 that West Coast ground fish fisheries were declared an economic disaster, Jennifer Dianto Kemmerly, director of the Seafood Watch program, describes the rapid turnaround as unprecedented. Among the species upgraded are all trawl and longline caught rockfish, which previously had been listed as avoid, and flatfish such as starry flounder, sand dabs, and Dover sole. This month, the California State Senate gave final legislative approval to Senate Bill 1138, which would make it unlawful for any person to knowingly sell or offer to sell at wholesale or retail any fresh, frozen, or processed food fish or shellfish without identifying the species by its common name. The bill also makes it illegal to mislabel seafood as farmed or wild caught. A violation would be punishable by a $1,000 fine and up to a year in jail. The bill, which is modeled after similar legislation in the state of Washington, now goes to Governor Brown for his consideration. In Alaska, a new ballot measure will be voted on in the November state election that, if approved, would put restrictions on mining in Bristol Bay. The measure, sponsored by a political group, Bristol Bay Forever, would require legislative approval for the creation of large-scale metal mines in the area known as the Bristol Bay Fisheries Reserve, KDLG-FM reports. The 36,000 square mile reserve was established in 1972 as a way to protect the local salmon populations from the effects of oil and gas development. The initiative broadens the geographic area of the reserve and it applies to not just state lands but to state, private, and federal lands within the reserve. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has closed the eastern area of Georgia's bank to cod fishing through April 30, 2015 because 130 percent of the total allowable catch of cod has been caught. The area will reopen on May 1, 2015. NOAA also closed the yellowtail flounder fishery in several areas near Georgia's bank through the end of August because 150 percent of the area's total allowable catch for the trimester had been caught. The area reopened September 1. Countries that fish in the northern Pacific have agreed to cut by half the number of young bluefin tuna they catch, according to the AFP. At a four-day subcommittee meeting of the Western and Central Pacific Fisheries Commission, participants agreed to a drastic reduction on the 2002-2004 average catch. Participants, including South Korea, the United States, Canada, Taiwan, and Japan, the world's biggest consumer of tuna, are developing a 10-year recovery plan for Pacific bluefin tuna that they will present in December and begin to implement in 2015. The conservation initiative comes on the heels of last year's International Independent Assessment that found stocks of bluefin tuna had fallen 96 percent from their original levels, the AFP reports. For more commercial fishing news and analysis, subscribe to National Fisherman Magazine, visit our website at www.nationalfisherman.com, or subscribe to our twice-weekly e-newsletter. For National Fisherman Live, I'm Leslie Taylor.